Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. And today, the long awaited, very requested video from you all is how I chop up my Bath and Body Works candles, how I freeze, chop, what bags do I use, where do I get them from, why do I do it, answering your questions, all this that, and the other, plus chopping some other bigger slabs of wax from other vendors. Well, we're gonna get into it. I'm also gonna show you guys what types of cutters that I have as well. And yeah, we're gonna do everything step by step. So here we go. Hey guys, okay, so these are the four different candles that I chose to chop, to freeze and chop up. So we've done the freezing, we've let this sit overnight. I tend to do the freezing, I leave it, leave it in there for days or weeks, I don't, I don't really keep count to be honest. Just do, do it as long as you can, no big deal. So then I've already shown you how I pop these out. Now I'm going to show you um, how to take these little wicks. So all these little two of them here, because one of them stayed inside the jar, but these wick clips and wicks. We're gonna show you how um, I'm going to remove those. But first off, I just wanna let you know that the three of these are brand new candles, they're full candles. But if you can see here, this one, it's like less than half the size. And this is the Frosted Cranberry candle that I love so much, I love the scent. But it was, um, you can see the discoloration, it was starting to smell sooty. Um, most of you guys in the wax or candle world will understand that kerosene type scent. Um, so I didn't want to risk it, so I decided to put this part of the uh, chopping video. So this also, interestingly enough, of all three of these other candles, these wicks are going to be a little bit, you know, a little bit more to wiggle out. They've got some glue in there. Uh, this one, since we burnt it a bit, you can see that they've actually come away from the wax, which is interesting, which might be very helpful. So. Not the first time I've ever burnt, or sorry, this is the first time I ever chopped up a partially burnt candle. So this is a first for me. So today I'm just gonna show you how to wiggle out these little wick, uh, wick clips. And there's a little bit of glue, but I don't really care about the glue too much. If it does end up sticking on the candle a little bit, no big deal. Okay, so we're gonna start firstly with the half burnt candle is the frosted cranberry scent as you see here and as I showed you earlier this one is partially burned and so I froze it just like the others and let it rest overnight um, and you can sort of see because this one was burned previously you can see the wicks have actually come away which will actually probably make this very very easy to remove and look at that I don't even need a knife I can just have small fingers and that's totally fine by me so let's just do this for the third one so that is how to remove a previously burned candle. This one was very easy. The glue actually came with it. Okay, so now we have one of the ones that have never burned. I just picked this up. This is in the spiced apple toddy in the um, like 20s style uh, labels. Anyway, this one has not been previously burned. Therefore, as I'll bring up to close here, you can see these suckers are in there pretty good. Now you see all these cracking. I don't know if you can, oops, sorry. 
I don't know if you can tell, but there's some cracking going on throughout the candle, but that happens when you let it rest. Take it out of the freezer, I let it rest on the counter overnight, and sometimes you actually hear it crackle um, as the wax comes to room temperature. So then I just take a knife, be very careful, always pull away from you. So um, I'm standing behind the camera. So I'm just gonna try one here, just wiggle. So you can sort of see it's coming apart. As I said, that um, the candle itself is kind of cracking, which when you start to wiggle these out, kind of pull, pulls apart, it's not a big deal. So there's one wick. And this is the second wick. So not a big deal. I'm not really, I don't care if my wax is not perfect when I when it comes out of this at the end of the day. That's the second one and the third one. So let's see here. A little bit more of a struggle. You can tell that the ones that have not been burned, which is three quarters of them, um, a little bit more of a struggle. It smells really good. I'm holding down the sides and removing the wax and the wax clip. So now there's no metal. There's a little residual um, glue on here. Again, I don't care if you're that finicky. You can go ahead and, and remove it, but I find that I'll just remove more wax than the glue. Next candle up is from, again, the 1920 style candle or label. It's the Frosted Moscow Mule. And I will say this has made our kitchen smell absolutely delicious. Um, very uh, like effervescent, uplifting, lemon, lime, sugar, all that stuff and I've never had an actual Moscow Mule and I don't believe that Nelson has either but if it tastes as good as it smells it'd probably be really good. Right Nelson? You know it. <laughs> there you go. So this one as I probably saw earlier when I took it out of the freezer and gave it a little bit of a tap on the uh, or, sorry on the uh, tea towel um, one of the wicks decided to stay in. Hey, that's fine by me, unless you want to recycle them, repurpose the jar, which you totally can. A lot of people use them for planters. A lot of people use these as uh, coasters, the lids. So um, I will just be recycling it. Uh, so I'm not really worried about that at all. So I'm down to two wicks to have to remove, which is great. A little less work for us. So I thought, well, I will tell you guys, again, for those of you who are new to my channel, hi, please like and subscribe and turn on your bell notifications. That would be awesome. Um, basically, a lot of people have been asking me why I cut my Bath & Body Works candles up. And the simple, simple reason is because I really only burn candles in around fall and winter for the most part. And then I find that I have all these, you know, nice scented candles like this Moscow, Moscow Mule came out at this time of year in the winter, but it's a very summery scent. Not to say I won't melt this in the middle of um, winter, but uh, yeah, no, I, uh, anyway, what I'm trying to say here is it's just economical when you buy candles, especially if they're on sale. I've always encouraged if you are one to buy multiples of things, of candles, I would say just buy, well, this is what I would do. If I really, 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 really like a candle, I will just purchase the two, one possibly to burn and the other one to chop up. Or if it's a very seasonal uh, candle, again, spring and summer, then I will likely just buy the one to chop up and melt in my melters, just because it just goes further. It's 14 and a half ounces of wax. And again, if you have get a candle sale and then coupons on top of that, it makes it just way more economical. Um, and I do enjoy melting my wax as well. So that there is the Moscow Mule, and that was just, I had to remove two of them. And again, just like, you can't really tell, there's a little residual wax there, but not a big deal. So on to the next one. All right, so for the very final candle, we're gonna do Champagne Toast, again, still from that same collection. One of us, one of the best uh, body care, from candle to body, body care that Bath Body Works has ever done. Apparently I can't speak today. Um, but yes, this is a very good one. I'd still say for, for the bright, uplifting Moscow Mule might actually have it beat. Although Champagne Toast is a beautiful change of pace for all the really heavy scents of winter. So anyway, uh, I thought while, I, while I'm getting these three out here, I will chat with you guys about um, some of the, I'll answer one or two of your questions here and I'll answer some more in the future when we actually cut these things up. But um, yeah, because after this, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you what I do. There's a couple more steps. So Wax Melt Central asked me any major holidays or vacation plans once the pandemic is over. Well, it kind of depends on what goes on 
in our country um, and what's allowed. And we're in the Atlantic bubble, if you will. There wasn't one anymore, but there was one called Atlantic bubble. Long story short, um, if we can't go anywhere until the fall when everything is supposedly, hopefully, uh, vaccines are given to almost everybody and so on here in this country, then I'll probably be back to my parents' place for it, which is the Okanagan Valley in British Columbia for a wedding reception, which we should be there right now. I'm filming this on the 21st of December and we were supposed to be visiting my parents, staying with them for a couple of weeks um, in the Okanagan and we were supposed to have our wedding reception on New Year's Eve and that's not going to be the case. But again, depending on the timing, um, I think that we both kind of want to go to Iceland. Um, I think because we're so far here on the east coast of Canada, Iceland is actually a very quick trip. It's what six hour flight, maybe one changeover now that the flights aren't as uh, as prevalent as they used to be or as, as often as they used to be. But um, and it would be like way less expensive for us to go to Iceland uh, from here if then if we lived in British Columbia, which is clear across the country of Canada. So so now. I'm going to do one of these candles at a time. So at this point, you don't have to because the wax is fairly, it's fairly, it's room temperature. It's not going to be too, super tough. But I like to put all of my candles uh, just before I chop them up. So I'm going to do one at a time. So I'll just show you one um, and maybe two of them. But what I'm going to do is put them in the microwave for 15 seconds. That's one five seconds just to give it a little bit of warmth, a little, you know, just make it a little bit easier to cut. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to show you the different cutters. I have a little cutter here. It's super teeny tiny. I'll show you the difference here in a moment. But this one's really good, not necessarily for the purposes that we're doing today, because this is quite small, because I'll show you a different one, similar shape or similar wavy pattern, um, is this one. So this is made for more of the smaller pieces that you can get, you know, half it or quarter it. I also use this for my Bath and Body Works bubble bars when I chop them up to put them into the bath. But this is the one we'll probably be using today. It's a cool little wave pattern. As you can see, it's a little dirty. It's just wax. I'm not, it's not I think it's gonna be bad on it. So um, anyway, this was a really, really nice, again, it was a gifted to me. Uh, it was very, very, very generous. This is great, I love this. But if you want a straight cut, this can, you can find, a lot of vendors will have cutters on their websites on and off. It kind of depends on what they are able to get their hands on. Um, but this one's in particular, the straight one, is one that you can find in the bakery section. Um, it's quite a weighted handle, which is quite nice, but it's straight, unlike the wave here. It's very straight. So a lot of bakers will use this to slice um, their dough um, apart so that you can cut parts of your dough and start baking, I guess, start rolling it out. So anyway, there, I have three different ones. Today, I've decided I don't want this really big straight edge. And this really small one is just too small for the job of what we got going on here. So for all of them today, I'm going to use this little wax cutter. And they are normally, you can find them all over the internet, whether it's Amazon, or again, if your favorite vendor has them in stock, probably anywhere between eight and $12 American. So now I'm going to take this little puppy and put it in the microwave for 15 seconds. That's one five seconds. So straight out of the microwave, here we go. And again, I am not too picky about how they actually look or turn out, to be fair. Um, so they're not gonna be the most perfect cuts. And a lot of times, like this one's quite cracked, you can probably start splitting it like so, um, and then just sort of start cutting. Let's see here, let's see if we can do this for you. And then we'll fall into little pieces. I don't have as much control on cutting. Um, I haven't been able to control necessarily the sizes or the pieces of my wax from Bath & Body Works, but that I'm okay with because it just sort of breaks apart. So as you guys can see, there's a really nice good chunk there. It smells so good. This is that Moscow Mule. Really, really good. See if we can do it sideways. See, it's all nice and because of um, the cracking, there's a lot of little pieces, which is not a big deal because I'll show you what I do afterwards. I do not miss a beat when it comes to this stuff because 
nothing goes to waste. Next question. So this one is from C. Castling Leon. <laughs> uh, what's your next movies, movie or TV project? Well, I don't have any. <laughs> I wish I did. Um, but because of what's going on with the world, there's not as much going on. There's a lot of local things. Um, I was working a lot, so uh, I wasn't able to do or help out with some of the other projects that I was, you know, a part of earlier on in the year or in the fall or in the late summer. Uh, but really, it's just going to take our border from Canada, USA to open because we have a closed border at the moment. Nobody in, nobody out. Um, and then we'll see how it goes because I've had a lot of fun. So I can only hope that I do some more in the future. But yeah, that was the next question. And that was the, basically that's the chopped up Moscow mule. So I made a mistake. That first one we did was actually champagne toast. And this one is a Moscow mule. So now we're onto this one and we're gonna answer a couple more questions. We have a question from Felicia Callahan. And her question is, are you planning on adding to your family your own baby or adopting? And I'm gonna say very nicely, no. Um, I'm 42 years old, Nelson's pushing 50, old man. Um, and Nelson, <laughs> it's not not true. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it is so true. Anyway, um, but he has a 19, almost 20 year old son and I am totally fine without having kids. I love kids. Um, yeah, I love playing with kids. Kids are great. I have two nephews now that are all grown up and um, yeah, I really enjoyed my time hanging out with them when they were younger. Um, but no, I don't want children of my own or our own. My next uh, children will be a plane. Right. Yes, he wants a plane if you didn't hear that. So <laughs> that won't be anytime soon. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, so what I'm trying to say is uh, no, um, likely there'll be grandkids before there's kids. <laughs> Oh, no, there is. It is likely it'll be grandkids before kids because we aren't having any kids of our own. So it'll be his son if he has children of his own um, that will grace our pres presence. Um, yeah, so there's your question. And the next question I am going to Lisa is a Leo. She's a fellow Canadian, mostly Instagrammer. She used to do wax melts. Uh, and that back in the day, she even had her channel is exactly the same, Lisa is a Leo. And anyway, her question is, because she's very much into fragrance, uh, her question is, what is my favorite type of perfume? So type, that's a very open-ended question in that sense, because I guess in a sense, I like long lasting. So the more oil concentrate, the better. Eau de Parfum, that kind of thing. Um, I love anything vanilla, but I'm more like I'm, I'm partially because I'm a gourmand lover. So gourmand meaning something like you would eat like a pastry or something like that or something sweet. I love that. I think that if I were to create my own fragrance someday, not that I will, I'm, I'm just in my head, it would definitely be a boozy gourmand, a boozy sweet gourmand, that kind of thing. I love the bourbon scents and, and that kind of thing. So um, that's the kind of fragrance that I enjoy. So that's the last of the Moscow Mule.
So last up on the chopping block, we have a very large medallion from the bathing garden in sleigh bells. And it's a jumbo wax tart, eight and a half ounces. And it's sugar dusted pines layered with orange peppermint clove and apple. So before we go any further on to how I bag things or and label them in, the, in that, uh, we're going to go into the actual bags themselves. So can you hear the rustling? Um, I went into my collection and grabbed a few different bags. What I like to use for the Bath and Body Works, excuse me, hiccups, uh, candles chopped up. If they're a full candle, um, all of these were ordered on L3 Waxy Wonders, except for one package, I think. Anyway, um, L3 Waxy Wonders is a wax vendor, but a lot of your favorite vendors will probably have them. And on Amazon, you will also find a lot of different types of bags, but you've got to remember these particular ones here. There's This is the large bakery bag, and this is the small bakery bag. Now, they're all wax lined inside, so you don't want to just get a a regular paper bag you will lose the scent much quicker whereas these are all sorry they're all wax lined it's kind of hard to see but wax lined this one has a window in it and so on so for the full bath and Byrex candles i like to use this for the small one we'll probably use something like this then when it comes to polypropylene bags we have many different sizes to choose from so it really depends on you know how much wax you're cutting and things like that so I have a few different ones. This is quite a large package of them. I'm just gonna bring this up a little bit here. So this is a very large package here. Uh, in this package are 100, I think it's 100 or 50, um, six by six bags. So again, these are the thicker polypropylene bags, not the thin, flimsy, flippy ones. This is quite a bit thicker, not the stuff you can generally get at the dollar store. These can be found again on Amazon um, at L3 Waxy Wonders or else your favorite vendor. Check their uh, stock out and see if they've got any. So this is a six by six, so for smaller pieces. For really small pieces, we've got a four by four. So if you're just chopping up like say, um, like a, I don't know, a medallion of some sort and you're just cutting it into quarters, then that would be it. So, and then we have a six by nine, so like the other one was six by six, this is six by nine, so six by nine, so six up this way and nine that way, so it's quite a bit bigger there. And lastly, we have the five by five. So it just really depends on what size, like how much wax you're putting into these bags. All right, so for this one here is the Sleigh Bells uh, Jumbo Wax Tart that we just finished cutting up. And because it was in like a totally different form and it's not a huge amount of wax, it's eight and a half ounces versus a full candle from Bath & Body Works, that's 14.5. So what I've done is I've taken one of these smaller bakery bags is I put TBG for the bathing garden in sleigh bells. And I also wrote on the back saying sugar, dusted pines, orange, peppermint, clove, and apple. So basically I'm just going to put everything from here into here. That is that one. So all of sleigh bells fit into the small bakery bag. It's a little tight, but I didn't put in any rhyme or reason. I just basically threw it in there. So you can just tighten this up, seal it, and she's ready. So I can't wait to start melting this one. I've had this in my collection since 2018. So yeah, about time. All right, let's move on to the other one. As mentioned before, this frosted cranberry candle was half burned. So I also used the same small size bakery bag and just labeled BBW for Bath & Body Works for Frosted Cranberry. The reason why is because this particular label is part of the actual wraparound. So I'm not able just to peel it off, but I will show you guys how I do peel off other labels. And 
that's that one here. So um, there's lot, a little less uh, product in here than that 8.5 ounce. So I'm gonna say there's more like six ounces left of this candle because I did have this one partially burned. I think it was a little burned, obviously, more than halfway. So again, I'm just folding this down, peeling this back, and there you go, there's another bag. So next up, we're going to do the spiced apple toddy. So I'm going to choose this larger bag right here. And before I do so, I'm gonna take this label, or I'm gonna remove this label here. I'm just gonna move the wax. So all I do, generally these labels are pretty good. Um, I haven't peeled this one off. Just take the lid off, just makes it easier. And I have a little bit of my nail. I'm gonna slowly peel away. There's no heat needed, but it's already been frozen. Like, look at this. Look how easy that is. And look how fairly clean. I mean, there's a bit of glue in there. If you, again, wanted to repurpose this jar, there's lots of YouTubers that do that. Um, I don't, uh, for the most part. I just recycle them. So I take this large bakery bag. Again, I order from L3 Waxy Wonders. Again, Amazon will have them and so on. So this is considered a large bakery bag. And because I know that the bottom is about here, and I want to be able to roll it down, I like to do it about halfway. may not be perfect but it's it's on there so I don't have to write anything so now all I have to do is to take all of this and stick it inside this bag so that's what we're gonna do all right this place is getting a little messy <laughs> Um, but anyway, there is spiced, oops, I'm bringing you up again here. So that's spiced apple toddy. So I'm just going to wipe my fingers down here. And then the, this is that large bakery bag. So I'm going to show it behind you. Behind this bag are the small ones. I'll show you the difference. I just like folding it over a couple times, taking the tabs. You can see the difference in size here. So that is everything. I answered some of your questions. I told you about all the different bags that I purchase and where I get them, but also you can look in all sorts of places. But it's really important to get the proper polypropylene bags. I think it's like the number five in that little triangle. Anywho, um, and I've showed you how to, let's see, freeze things. Uh, let them get them out of the jar frozen and then let, let them sit out anyway I basically went through everything and here is the finished product so I put all the jars in front of each item and this was of course in a box um, and that I took it out of the jar so that is everything if you guys have any further questions please don't hesitate to ask away in the comment section and feel free to like comment all right you guys thank you so much for watching i hope that was informative if you have any more questions down below don't hesitate to comment down below in the comment section um we can all help each other out if someone knows the answer before i'm able to get back to them please feel free to answer a question um but yeah this is something i was doing if it wasn't for my friend sarah 
Things I Love 86. She had the probably the best. If you look it up, I will put her up here somewhere. Uh, Things I Love 86. She no longer creates videos on YouTube, but she does have a plethora of videos of chopping videos. And I really do. She was the one who got me started in to the chopping of wax. She's so relaxing. Her cuts are way nicer than mine. <laughs> I'm just like a bull in a china shop. So Sarah from Things I Love 86. If you do pop over, do t say hi for me. She's great. I did visit her when I was in Texas almost two years ago now. But she is the inspiration for anything that I wanted to chop up for sure in the past and the present and then the future. And that, my friends, is done. So again, feel free to comment down below or put your... How do you do yours? How do you chop up your candles? Do you chop up your candles? Have you thought about chopping up your candles but you weren't sure? As always, you guys, be safe, take care, and have fun. Bye, guys.